Hello, and welcome to Mechanical Why. I have famous ancestors, it's true. Who are they? Well, I have no idea, but I know they must exist. It's a mathematical certainty. The reason is exponential growth. Let's illustrate this to make it clearer. I, like every human I know, to have existed, am the result of two parents. Like me, each of my parents themselves is the result of two parents such that I have four grandparents. Each of them, in turn, is the result of two parents such that I have eight grandparents. And we can continue on in this fashion further and further back in time. Every single person being born requiring double the number of people in the previous generation to have lived. Now, let's note that generations are about 25 years apart. That is, parents tend to have children at approximately 25 years of age, broadly speaking. So a mere 100 years before I was born, I required 16 ancestors to have been alive, to each of which I am a blood relation. But the further back we go, the more and more ancestors we require. In mathematical terms, we need 2 to the x ancestors to be alive at the same time, with x being the number of generations back we wish to go. Compared to the 16 ancestors I would require a mere 100 years ago, 200 years ago, I would require a whopping 256 blood relations all to be alive at roughly the same time. And a mere 500 years before my birth, I would require a minimum of over 1 million ancestors to have been alive, each a direct blood relation. And just 1,000 years before my birth, I would, I would have over 1 trillion ancestors. And here we see a problem. We barely made it back to the beginning of the Middle Ages, and we've run out of people. Around this time, it is estimated that the population of the entire Earth was only 300 million people. Over 3,500 times fewer people than I require if each of my ancestors is descended from two unique parents. That is unless branches on my family tree converge back in on themselves, such that at some point not all ancestors have two unique parents. Going back a few generations, my genealogy may be a tree-shaped, diverging in every which direction, but at some point, it begins to look more like a net. It has to. There just weren't enough people alive for it not to converge. This is known scientifically as pedigree collapse. And it's not just true for me, it is true for every human in existence. Requiring each person in history to have two unique parents, and requiring each of them to have two unique parents, means that mathematically each person alive today would require more ancestors to be alive at once than people were actually alive at the time. And this collapse would happen a mere 30 generations, or about 700 years in the past. Furthermore, we don't have to worry about genetic variation. Our genes are effectively randomized at just four or five generations. But back to my original statement. I have famous ancestors because everyone alive today must be related to some degree. And we don't have to go that far back in time to find common ancestors. Let's look at one interesting case. In 2009, a 12-year-old girl named Bridge Ann Davignon from California worked with her grandfather and found that all U.S. presidents, except for Martin Van Buren, share a common ancestor. John Lackland Plantagenet, also known as King John of England, living circa 1200 A.D. He was nemesis of Robin Hood and signer of the Magna Carta. Yes, every president as of 2009, except Martin Van Buren, but including President Barack Obama, are related to King John, who lived only about 800 years ago. Going back even further, even Martin Van Buren would be looped back into the family. Tracing his lineage back to the Netherlands, we know that there were heavy migrations of Europeans from this region to the British Isles some four to 5,000 years ago. So I suspect all U.S. presidents share a common ancestor going back just 5,000 years. Further illustrating the point ev that everyone is related, Ms. Avignon herself discovered that she is related, albeit distantly, to the presidential line, being an 18th cousin to President Barack Obama. In fact, some genealogists estimate that one-third of all people in the United States are descended from King John in some way since about one-third of Americans, including Barack Obama, have English ancestors. I personally doubt that I am, since I trace my lineage back to parts of Europe other than England. But this raises one final question. Who is the most recent common ancestor for all of the living human race? In other words, how far back do we have to go such that all humans alive today are descended from the same person? Using mathematical models, researchers estimate that this person may have lived as little as 5,000 years ago and perhaps only as far back as 15,000 years, even with the conservative mathematical estimates. 
But before you ask, mitochondrial Eve and why chromosomal Adam are a topic for another discussion. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this interesting. If you did, please like and share this video and please subscribe to stay up to date on new content. Also, please visit us at our website www.mechanical-y.com.